All right, well, hello and welcome back to yet another episode of the, the Upset Special. We have had a two-week hiatus, uh, and a lot has happened in those two weeks from our from our picks for each of those weeks. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to recap the recent successes that we've had because, of course, that's how that works out. Um, first and foremost, must shout out the random wheel did record its first win of the season uh, a couple weeks ago when uh, Charlotte um, I, Charlotte over Tulsa picked up that one good job wheel uh big stuff from them um as well as who else hit george got arizona over ucla josh picked on houston over baylor all those hit two weeks ago last week somehow yours truly went 2-0 i got frank gore jr ran wild yet again and uh then i got also saved by Oklahoma State laying a massive egg in Orlando, Florida. Thank you, Gus Malzahn, for that, and Mike Gundy for being typical Mike Gundy and disappointing right after he has a big success. Um, so we were close with a couple others last week, but as far as I know, those are the only two that hit. Um, so I can't go further than what I just did, so I don't really know what to do at this point because now I've, I've peaked, and I think I'm just that, – that, 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 I'm like a kid that peaked in high school. I just – I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to make it further. We'll see if I can follow that up with another – 2-0 performance this week, though. Um, just before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, leave your upset picks down below and your your negative and or positive opinions of our upset picks as well. Um, go ahead, jump right into it. Uh, I'll start with my first one. Um, I've got, it's not the biggest spread in the world, um, but the, the the win total differential speaks for itself uh, and just kind of how the two teams have played throughout the season speaks for but. Uh, I'll take Virginia over Duke. Uh, They're only getting three and a half um, over there. Uh, And I just, Cavaliers have fought really, really hard. Even in all their losses this year, they've been a really tough team to consistently take down. They obviously pulled off that uh, massive upset over North Carolina. Um, You know, they played Miami close. They played Louisville. You could argue they should have beat Louisville last week. Uh, Kyle Andrea, I think, has an incredibly bright future at quarterback. He's really sparked that offense. Um, I, I would hope that he would continue to start. I know he and Tony Musket have been kind of alternating throughout the season. Uh, Malik Washington, wide receiver, is an absolute stud, transfer to Northwestern. And just I, it, him having the success, Virginia should probably encourage most, most Northwestern skill position players to transfer away and probably have more success, even though the Wildcats, credit to him, are, are doing better this season. Um, but yeah, Duke, Duke played well last week in that loss to UNC. I mean, again, a game that could have gone either way, especially with Al Riley Leonard was really impressive to see how they played. Um, I think they're going to play another, you know, good game in Charlottesville. But I think fine, UVA gets another close win. Um, they, they, they get some late season momentum. They might even, if they get this one, I could see them taking down Virginia Tech next week as well and really ending the season on a high note. So I'll give it to the Cavs. I think they're due for one after that North Carolina win a couple weeks ago and coming so close to Louisville last week. So I'll go Cavaliers, stay on that hype train, and uh, and keep it going. But, Josh, you're, you have the floor for your first one. Yeah, uh, I'll just uh, touch on that pick a little more. I had that as one of my um, other picks. This could be a Duke. Uh, there's different types of emotional letdown games. There's the ones where you're coming off a great high off of beating a team, and there's the others where you were right there you had it and then you lost it. That was how it was for Duke against North Carolina. A really fun game. And second year in a row just gets their hearts ripped up against the Tar Heels. And also, this is the CW game of the week, man. And the CW is full of upsets. It's uh Delivers. yeah, exactly. It's it's man, shout to the CW again. Just <laughs> awesome stuff. Um, um before the season, I remember we were looking at the CW and just like, why is football yeah. on this network? And now it's like, I can get behind this. Exactly. Um Okay, I have a few. I, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. So, I've got a Iowa State um, plus seven and a half versus Texas. That I, I just okay. stand in line. Um, it's vibes. This is this is Ames in the evening. I checked. It's gonna kick off like seven local time. Um, it's cold in Iowa, or it should be. I didn't actually check the weather, which is kind of my fault, but I'm assuming it is. It's the Midwest in November. Um, a nice forty five degrees. Oh, well, Texas is gonna hate that. Um. Texas let TCU almost come back. Um, I don't maybe that's a focusing factor for Texas, but they did lose uh, the Longhorns. They just lost Jonathan Brooks, um, awesome running back for the season. Uh, tough blow to them. Ewers is back. He looked good enough against TCU. Another week to get healthy and stuff. But again, without their star running back, I don't know how it's going to be. And Iowa State, they've been really good this week or this year, and I expect them to be good this week, which is why I'm picking them. And again, if anything, like I say. 
if you go look back at some of my picks, I've been kind of close. And um, so maybe again, sprinkle a little something on Iowa State here. But yeah, this one, this just feels like a typical, oh, this is when Iowa State is going to get somebody. They haven't really had one of those in, the, in a little bit, but this feels like one. All right. Uh, Cyclones are back to wreak some havoc, which would just throw the Big 12 into chaos because Oklahoma State, they did just get destroyed by UCF, but like they still have the inside track to make it. And then Texas, this would be, yeah, I think, yeah, Texas would still be fine, but I don't know, a bunch of chaos. So this is the perfect time for Iowa State to strike. Yeah. And you got, I mean, yeah, and you got a, a team in Iowa State that Rocco Beck has kind of emerged out of nowhere for them this season. You had the preseason with, you know, the, the, the players gambling and having so many suspensions and whatnot. And people went into this year thinking, ISU has been down for one or two years now. Is is Matt Campbell going to be able to kind of turn this around? So he really was able to. A lot of young guys are contributing for this team. Uh, I mean, Beck has been phenomenal. I think the easy comparison to throw out there is he's got the next Brock Purdy written all over him, which, you know, is fair. But I think he's his own player, and I think he's got a great career ahead of him. Uh, their running game is really excelled too. But, yeah, your, your point on Jonathan Brooks, I think that's a bigger loss for Texas than people really realize. That guy was explosive and provided them a lot of big plays when they needed it. Um especially against Kansas State. So that's going to be really difficult. And, yeah, I think it would. I mean, it, it'd allow Kansas State, I believe, to have a, a greater chance to make the Big 12 title game as well. And I think um, – I was seeing some – somebody said this week, yeah, there's, like, a potential for, like, a six or 17 tie for, like, first in the Big 12 after this weekend if, like, a ton of things happen. But, so, yeah, the Big 12 could get crazy. I could totally see it. It's – as you said, aims at night. It is they, – they pull off an upset there a year uh, on average. And I think they're going to hit that quota too. I could, I could definitely see it. Um, Going elsewhere, uh, George from Transfer Portal, he also threw in uh, – he threw in Colorado over Washington State. He's going to believe in Dion amidst the, the six-game losing streak um, – or uh, five games, I believe, at this point. But um, regardless, Colorado going into Pullman on Friday night, two just reeling teams. I mean, Washington State, I, their losing streak, I think, is six games um, at this point. It's at least five. Um, two teams desperate for a win, keep their ball hopes alive before they take on even tougher opponents next week, both of their rivals – uh, Utah for Colorado and obviously UW for Washington State would be tough, but you got to get this win first to get to bowl eligibility. Would be huge for you. Those coaching staffs are both trying to, to build up programs. So taking Dion, Washington State favored by four at home. George will take Dion and Co. And that, of course, leaves the random wheel, which will decide its pick. Got its first one a couple weeks ago. Didn't pick up one last week, but we'll see what it can manage to, to do this week. Ooh, where are the Utah Utes playing this weekend is a great question. I actually forget off the top of my head. They are playing at Arizona, which mm, that's going to be – that might be vetoed because that's going to be a pretty even – that's got to be a pretty even split. Arizona by one, I'm not allowing it. I'll take – I'll go for another one from the wheel. Why not? Oh, wow. New Mexico State Aggies. They, they're going to probably be the ones getting upset, I would imagine, because they don't play Jacksonville State until next week. Um, yeah. Uh, who is the game? It's always the most fun part about this podcast is just searching for the teams that the wheel just generates. Oh, they're playing Auburn. <laughs> oh yes, and the wheel takes Mexico State. You know what? I, I mean, I'm not picking that one, but Mexico State is a good enough team. I think Auburn has really hit their stride recently, and I think they're looking to they're build. They've been building this entire season towards the Iron Bowl and just putting on a good show against Bama at home. Maybe it's a look ahead game. New Mexico State, Diego Pavia, really talented. Uh, yeah, maybe they muddy it up, but I don't know. We Auburn offense just looked too good recently. I think they can physically dominate at MSU, but who knows? I, Aggies were really impressive in going on the road and beating uh, Western Kentucky and Bowling Green last week. So I, I won't put it past them. We'll see. That could that could be something crazy. I, I like where the wheels at this week. Um, for my second one, I'll stick stick in the ACC. Uh, I'll go. Uh, it's not the biggest spread yet again, kind of a weird one, but based on ranking, it definitely is an upset. Miami over Louisville. Uh, I think that, frankly, I've been out on Louisville ever since, even a little bit before they lost to Pitt, but definitely after the Pitt game. I mean, you've seen what Pitt has done since, and it, it may be people can say fluky, whatever. I, don't, I haven't been overwhelmingly impressed with Louisville in any game. I think they have a good night. I, they have a – great not elite defense and they have a good not great offense and i think that's just a combination for late season collapse they lose this game to miami uh they maybe take down kentucky we'll see that might be a toss-up game but acc title game i think they get humbled i think it starts this weekend against miami miami's been just 
They've been so close. I mean, it, Mario Cristobal's fault is sometimes it's been some of the coaching staff. Um, it's been some of the players at times, but they've got great offensive talent. You saw that last week against Florida State. Colby George is a freak of nature in the open field. Uh, the running back room has actually really come along nicely throughout the season. Unfortunately, Williams got hurt last week and won't be playing uh, again. So we're going to get Tyler Van Dyke, who, I mean, uh, he's going to go down probably, probably one of the just most up and down um, – just a quarterback careers of all time. Because we have the dynamic 2021 season. Then 2022, you come back, it's disappointing. Then 23, you start out great. And then get benched, injuries, and now you come back to Florida State, two for seven, throwing a abysmal interception. It's – it's I, I don't – a TVD is the one thing that really makes me scared to make this pick. I think at home, Miami gets a bounce back. I think Louisville gets exposed a little bit. Um, it's another one where the favorite, at, like, like Duke, has kind of been playing with fire a little bit. So – Unless their defense just really shuts down Miami, I think the Canes can win a kind of a, a closer one and uh, and keep it keep keep the Mario Cristobal you know hot seat slightly cool, very slightly cool because it is going to heat up exponentially throughout the offseason. I would imagine if they do not do something substantial next year. Uh, moving along, though, uh, George threw out a, a really interesting one. That I, it, all that's happening around Chip Kelly, it's going to be interesting to see how UCLA comes out this weekend against rivals USC. USC's last game of the regular season because they played uh, already in week zero. Um, Trojans just looking to take down their rivals, finish with eight wins, not what you wanted, not what you expected whatsoever, but finish on a positive note. You still run L.A. Um, UCLA, I mean, that offense is reeling. Quarterback really isn't figured out. Um, Arizona State beat them 17-7 last week. It's 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 a tough time, and they I believe there's rumors that Chip Kelly is – fired if he loses to USC and then if they beat USC he's going to be fired after the Cal game regardless which I personally I don't know if I'm all in on that I think he's shown enough in the past couple of years to warrant surviving through a semi down year that one could still argue had a pretty solid defense Dante Moore is a young he's still got a few bright future ahead of him why get rid of a guy when you're still sitting at six and four right now and you could finish eight and four and that's not I mean for me at UCLA, that's not a bad season for where this program is at right now. Eight wins is still great. So I just, who knows what's happening internally? We'll see. But George will take USC or UCLA over USC. USC favored by seven points in that one. Um, and then Josh, would you like the wheel to go first, or would you like to go with yours? I'll let the wheel go first. Sounds good. We'll let the wheel go first. Josh will get to uh, wrap us up, and the uh, I will picked arizona who's already playing utah good job wheel um yeah. but we'll give you we'll give you the the thunder and the final flare for this one north carolina is who are they oh they're playing clemson, clemson which that's gonna be that's i i'm not even look at the spread that's gotta be too close that's not that's not worthy wheel wheel's giving us some soft ones today Ooh, the fighting butch jones is arkansas state I, they have a key game i believe because they are still fighting for bowl eligibility. And I believe, yep. yes, they're playing Texas State, who already has a cheap bowl eligibility, but still kind of looking to push it further. Um, I would imagine, though, I'll give it to them. Texas State, three and a half. We'll give that to the wheel. Um, yeah. Over Arkansas State. I mean, yeah, it's been, I mean, I'll give Butch Jones a lot of credit for from how that season started and that Oklahoma game and just, I mean, him crying on the sideline and just everything with that. Uh, when you start out, oh, and you get blown up by Memphis. And you reel off three straight wins. Your only losses since then are to a good Troy team, a good Coast Carolina team, and an average South Alabama team. But still, you've gotten solid wins over over uh, Louisiana, a Southern Miss win that's looking better by the week. You need one win out of your last two to get to bowl eligibility. Texas State at home this week, probably the better opportunity over at Marshall next week, but we'll see. But they could be a huge success if they can pull that off. I mean, Texas State is a beast in its own right. It's going to be tough to slow down that offense. Um, and kind of what J.C. Kine's got – got going on there this season um so we'll see if tj finley if he'll light him up again but yeah we'll we'll take arkansas state um i, I like I, the wheels picks this week are nice i do like the wheels picks these are fun arkansas state new mexico state that's that's this is a good week for the wheel i hope it hits on one um but yeah josh i will throw it to you for your last one and then subsequently i assume your your bonus picks the week of course do you have any bonus picks? Because I'm actually going to go to my bonus picks first. Okay, I have one, um, but it wasn't even. It's been thrown around a little bit. It wasn't even anything crazy. I was, I was really just going if I, someone else took it. But I, I mean, I was going to go UNLV over Air Force. Air Force is only mm -hmm. favored by three. 
And I mean, it's two same record teams, but it's at Air Force. Air Force has dominated throughout the season, looked at it recently. Um, I just, I've been a big believer in UNLV in recent weeks. I think they can go on the road and do that. And then all things good, that, that locks them up. I mean, assuming something horrible doesn't happen in the final week, that would lock them up in the end up title game. It's kind of, this is a de facto kind of winner is in, loser is really might be sitting on the outside looking in for the Mountain West title. So big game. Uh, I'll take the Rebels uh, over the Falcons and uh, probably in a close game, but just don't know. I mean, Air Force turned the ball over. I mean, it was six against Army. I think it was four turnovers against Hawaii last week, maybe three. I just – such a disciplined team and one that has been so efficient running the ball. I just don't – I can't understand why they've had these turnover issues these past couple of weeks, but I think some teams are figuring out how to how to peanut punch effectively against the the modified triple option. But, yeah, that's, that's what I'll take as, as my backup. All right. I I was looking at those. I like those ones too. Didn't make my final cut. Um, but I do like those ones. Um some of these are kind of some of these are vibesy, some of these are like just the weird point spread. Um so Boston College plus three at Pitt. Um I get it, it's at Pitt, but like this still feels weird. Um that Boston College is the underdog. Uh, I feel like if anything, they should be a pick 'em, but you never know. Army plus four going. Uh, sorry, Army plus four hosting Coastal Carolina. This was a great game last year um, in Conway. This time it's away from Conway. It's going to be really chilly. Um, Coastal Carolina, like they're used to it, that weather kind of. Um, but this game is projected to be in the high 40s and slowly get colder as the game goes on. Um, I was checking Coastal Carolina, the weather there. It's been like actually kind of in like the mid 50s. So it's been kind of cold, but it's supposed to get hotter as the week goes on. So maybe it's like weird. Their like body gets used to like the 70 degrees that's projected. They fly up there to West Point and then they get cold. Southern Miss plus 14 at Mississippi State. This is just a wouldn't it be hilarious um, considering the not so hilarious situation surrounding of uh, the firing of the head coach. Uh, you never want to see someone lose a job, but would be hilarious to see Southern Miss go in there and just make it worse. And they've um, had so many players under the transfer portal since that firing. Mm-hmm. And you got Frank, Frank Gore Jr. That's hot recently too. I mean, hey, why not? Exactly. Um, Memphis plus eight and a half. They're hosting SMU and they're plus eight and a half. I understand Memphis has been just, they've been living on the edge the past few weeks, but that also means they're, they're used to close games. They're used to pulling it out. I understand SMU is really awesome, but SMU like hasn't really played anyone lately. So I feel like they should be a lot closer and it's just disrespectful to Memphis. In my opinion, I believe this is one of our pickups for the actual sheet. So I, I did go with Memphis. Talked about UVA and Duke. Uh, UNC is actually plus six at Clemson, which I I have in my notes, plus six question mark exclamation point. What has Clemson done to deserve almost a touchdown favorite? I, I don't know. Like Clemson, defense is still good. They're on the up and up. Uh, Dabo set the buy-in on the stock or whatever. I, I don't know, man. Dabo, I'll buy in when you uh, go to Texas A&M and take the head coaching job there. But yeah, that's that one. Whoa. <laughs> right. So my real pick, though. Yeah. I said a few weeks ago in the chat, in our in our group chat, that hey, I want to reserve a spot for the weekend of November yes. 18th. 18th. Yeah, because whether or not I was going to be on it, because I had an all not an all time rate. I kind of set up like a little hyperbole, but just because this is something I've had my eye on for a while. So, in 1999, the debut the debut album Before the Storm was released in Finland by DJ and record producer Darud. It was re-released in 2000 to other countries, and on the album, it's the song that everyone knows and loves, Sandstorm. 2009, a year before the that song became certified gold in the U.S., South Carolina played that song to hype up the crowd in the fourth quarter of a game against number four against number four Ole Miss. Gamecocks ended up pulling up the upset, and since then, it's become the anthem for the program, and it's one of the most famous songs. That's not like a school song, like an outside song played up there with um Anthem Sandman and all those songs. And um, this leads me to the news that I heard all the way back in August. Uh, and this had me lock this game in that this has to be an upset. And I was hoping it would go this way. Darude will be performing the song Sandstorm live before the game for South Carolina and Kentucky. You're having Darude in person. That's like having you somehow control the sun and then you bring in Superman. And Superman's powered by the sun. That's how it works. I don't really know the whole backstory of Superman, but sue me um so just like the music video which is it's like a lady's being chased by two people and she's carrying a briefcase or something and then like just as she gets caught like one of the people who is chasing her actually is on her side and turns on the other person knocks him out 
and like the two ladies they like get on the boat with the root or something and they go off i don't know it's weird but like that's kind of how it's gonna be it's gonna be weird there weird vibes just the extra energy with the root being there kentucky's gonna be chasing south carolina all game and then at the end it might might be some weird trick you know maybe a running back pass some weird coverage where like a defensive tackle drops it back 20 yards makes an interception who knows something wild is gonna happen in south carolina it's gonna pull off the upset against kentucky and they're gonna play that song with Darude there make him proud and i've got the gamecocks pulling off the greatest upset you'll ever see that's amazing i did not i did not realize they were performing that live this weekend that is phenomenal though because that city is going to go absolutely nuts for that song um I mean, yeah, that'd be a big one. I think in South Carolina making this late season, I mean, yet again, a late season push. Um, they have to win out to make people eligible, but final four games were at home. You passed the Jacksonville State test. You clobbered Vanderbilt. Um, Kentucky and Clemson stand your way of going back to a bowl and salvaging the season for Shane Beamer. And, you know, I mean, if they end up seven and six, I mean, that's from where you started, that is incredible for him to pull off a solid coaching job. So shout out. Uh, I, I always get that's the other thing. Sandstorm and Enter Sandman always like always yeah. mix me up between mm-hmm. the two. I love both of them independently. Lane Stadium's at the top of my bucket list to go for a college football stadium by far. Um, but yeah, Sandstorm will be that'll be electric this weekend when it's played, especially under the lights. Um, I also loved how you're very you're very. It's the time of year to get a little weather centric with with the upset picks. I think that's a really exactly. good strategy. That's why like. That's why before the season, like, for instance, I, I I go to Mizzou and cover the football team. Florida coming up here this weekend when it's going to be highs of 50, probably game game time and late in the game is going to be down the low 40s, high 30s. Florida guys are not going to be able to compete They're with that uh, up that. in Columbia. So I think that's just one example. I mean, there's a lot of different examples of that across the country. I think when you get realignment next year, you're going to see so many more examples of that when you got USC playing in New Jersey in November. Um or, you know, even I mean, even some even Texas coming up to Missouri again for, for the first time in a long time, not next year, but it will happen eventually. Stuff like that. So, yeah, kid, I think that's a that's a good strategy. Keep, keep an eye out for the weather in some games now that affects people. So it'll be interesting. But, yeah, just to recap what we got this week, I've got UVA over Duke and Miami over Louisville staying all ACC centric. Josh is going Iowa State over Texas and South Carolina over Kentucky. Shout out Sandstorm. Um, the wheel took New Mexico State over Auburn. Gigum Aggies, uh, the good Aggies, uh, not the not those other ones that don't have a head coach. Um, and it took Texas State over, or excuse me, Arkansas State over Texas State. I got that mixed up. Um, and then George contributed and threw in Colorado over Washington State. Dion's finally going to get that win and keep his bowl hopes alive. Um, and UCLA over USC on the road at getting seven points. A battle for LA. Uh, first and foremost, just can't wait to see those uniforms every single year. I wish more rivalries put the two home uniforms on the same field like UCLA USC does. It is beautiful every single time. Um, so that's some good picks for this week. I like it. I think this will uh, – the second to last weekend of the season, traditionally it is one of the lighter weeks of the season. It's held serve this year like that as well. But it's traditionally one of the ones where the most chaos happens. I mean, I look at even like – I mean, throwing crazy stuff out there, Michigan playing at Maryland, dare I say it, Oregon playing at Arizona State the same weekend that they lost in 2019 with the same college football playoff ranking to an Arizona State team that was not that great at the time. <sighs> Deja vu could happen in, in Tempe, Arizona. I mean, throw out Oklahoma State, Houston, if you want. Everybody's picking Wa- Oregon State over Washington. I don't even consider that an upset at this point. I think the Beavers are more than capable of winning that game. Um Sure to be a lot of stuff happening. North Alabama goes into Tallahassee and beats Florida State. You think that's happening, Josh? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, I, wanna, I actually want to look up North Alabama's record real quick just to see if they're oof, three and seven. Nah, nah they're going to do it. They're going to do it. It's all right. They're going to do it. It's that kind of weekend for it, you know? It is. It certainly is. And Florida State's, their, their record is still too flawless. They're, they need to... And yeah, I saw it because I saw this week. Um, it was Joel Clatt ranked them eighth in his rankings overall. Just saying, because he was saying if a team straight up played in a neutral field, who do I take? Florida State's the eighth best. I don't know. Yeah. It's close, but I, I can see it. I can definitely see it. But, anyways, that about wraps up another episode of the Upset Special. A shorter one for this week. Um, I don't believe we'll be able to have one next week, and we'll probably 
probably try to do some special for bowl season, um, something along those lines. Maybe make it a part of the part of the preview pod to have kind of a. It, it, it's tough to pick upsets in bowl games, but there's some where you look at and you're like, one team's overmatched, and so you could you could get a get an upset or two out of there. So we will see, but that'll wrap it up for Josh and I today. Uh, catch us again um, in a couple weeks from now for bowl season, as well as be sure to be on the lookout for our um, the Transportal CFB presented by No Contact CFB. Our preview and recap pods that will be coming out uh, weekly as we get deeper into the season and playoff talks heat up. For Josh and I, though, not all that will be all for today. Be up to the